If Highbury is fast becoming the league's leading silverware showroom, then London Colney is the sweatshop that makes it possible. Not that there's much sweat in evidence this week. With one game of the season left, the championships in the bag, autographs are in demand and celebrations are in order. When the most common complaints in the treatment room are hangovers and writer's cramp, you know you've had a good season. Uh, I think the consistency uh, was my strength this season. We played outstanding games, we've played a few boring games, a few games we've just hung in there and got what we believe in, what we work on, Monday to Friday for nine months of the year. Right, let's go everybody, we're ready, come on, let's get everybody moving, come on, let's go. Alan, yep. Come on, a few more goals to get on Saturday, yep. Back in the close season, it wasn't really goal scoring that George Graham had in mind when he set about strengthening the squad. On show at the Makita tournament at Wembley in August were goalkeeper David Seaman from QPR, central defender Andy Linnigan from Norwich, and in a nod towards 1992, a Swede from Italy. Anders Limpar, well, he even surprised me. I mean, I knew he was very talented, but uh, he'd never scored goals before in his career, and uh, he had really got off to a flyer. supporters salute a new hero. It was against Aston Villa in the Makita tournament, tried to hit the, the far corner and uh, lucky it went in. Campbell, it's a good turn, players to his right, Groves is one of them. Smith missed it, but Campbell didn't. Kevin Campbell stakes his claim for the new season. The final of the Makita tournament eventually turned out to be something of a collector's item, an Arsenal defeat. On the opening day of the league season, though, Wimbledon discovered that playing in blue doesn't make you Sampdoria. Limpar's away on the far side, and nicely found. He takes on Joseph. And Merson, the goal is open! And Arsenal have their first league goal of the new season. And Anders Limpar has created it. Too quick off the mark for Joseph. And where was the Wimbledon marking on Merson? Nowhere. Davis. Arsenal certainly using the wide positions effectively. Smith. 2-0. And I think Merson was beaten to the final touch there by Wimbledon's own Keith Curl. An own goal, but Arsenal won't mind that. The points are sure now. Groves and Smith and Groves, 3-0. And Arsenal in the second half here have begun their season in great style. And Perry Groves with a cracker. Breaker. Elstrup let it run. And Kingsley Black got the shot all wrong, but in fact the ball has stayed in play, retrieved well by Priest. And a goal for Luton. Lars Elstrup at the near post. Rowcastle takes them on though. Well hit. Chamberlain saw it all the way. Limpa. And the goalkeeper was lucky it bounced away from those following in. A ferocious strike by Anders Limpa. And a mistake now by James. Rowcastle. 1 1. Paul Merson. Thomas, Arsenal, who've had to work so hard, have the lead at last. And it really went through the crowd. On the half volley from Thomas, and Kerry Hughes on the post, couldn't keep it out. 
Next up was the North London derby against Spurs, but two arrows of judgment denied Arsenal three wins out of three. The first from the referee who turned down Paul Davis's penalty claim, the second when Alan Smith steered his shot fractionally wide. That draw was the only difference between Arsenal and Liverpool at the top after three games, and the Gunners' good start at the back was rewarded with England call-ups for Lee Dixon, Nigel Winterburn and the man who keeps Bob Wilson in part-time work. All set. Well, obviously, uh, four years with John Lukic, uh, and very successful years. And John began to become a favourite with the crowd, and probably 90% of the, the fans couldn't understand why I wanted a new goalkeeper. Uh, I still think John is one of the top six goalkeepers in the country, but I just think David Seaman's the best. It was hard because I'd heard of, you know, all the things that went on the last few games of the season, and uh, you know when it fell through, I got a bit of stick off the QPR fans and what have you. And, but I was always confident in myself. I knew that if I got the chance to do the saves, then the crowd would start liking me, which I did. There was a Seaman for England lobby before you got to Arsenal, but has being with a, a club as good as Arsenal made a difference as far as being noticed and selected? Do you think? I think the main difference is that uh, is the TV. You know, like you're on TV much more. You know, we've played, I don't know how many live games it is, but you know, you compare that to last year at QPR, we played one. You know, so obviously you're going to get noticed a lot more. And the danger for Everton is in their eagerness. But they might just get caught over committing. Dixon from right to left to Limpa. And Southall. Gross scores. 13 minutes into the second half. And Hinchcliffe trying to uh, swerve in one of these dangerous corners. He's done it! Mike Newell! Chelsea, well fancied by uh, a number of experts to do particularly well this season. They've bought well. But they've got to defend here against Perry Groves. And a cross from Dixon, a header down from Merson, and a goal from Limpa! Merson Limpa busy making the run inside him. Tripped. David Lee, the culprit. Penalty to Arsenal. Dixon took on this job last season. And he sends Besant the wrong way. And Rowcastle has found Michael Thomas all on his own. Besant has held Arsenal up, but maybe only momentarily. It's number three, it's Merson. Well, it's time for all the tricks now. Oh, and Limpa refused the invitation to shoot, but Rowcastle does. And Arsenal's position improves even further. Winterburn, just a little too casual. This is Dixon. And one for Chelsea, Kevin Wilson. And David Seaman was angry with the sloppy defending. Arsenal's corner. Merson, oh, Rowcastle! <laughs> Arsenal breaking out. And Limpa, that has settled it. And as Limpa on target again. Six minutes from time. After six games, Arsenal was second, but Liverpool still hadn't dropped a point. In the Rumbelows Cup, Chester fancied themselves as giant killers, for a bit. Well, maybe a chance here for Chester. Pugh, oh, and it's rocketed back off the post. Merson is away. And Arsenal, in a game that's really been a tough one for them here in Macclesfield, We'll go back to Highbury with at least one goal in the bank, provided for them by Paul Merson. Chapman. 
Oh, uh, prize for handball by Jonsson, but Leeds had the ball in any case with Gary McAllister. And, well, it would have been an own goal by Bold, but Chapman will certainly claim it. And technically it is his, right on the line. Lee Chapman for Leeds. McAllister has given it away to Jonsson. And now Limpar, Leeds looking for offside. It's not been given, the goal has. Limpar has claimed it, although uh, Sterling might have got the final touch, but the ball actually came through off David Batty. And that's why the referee allowed Limpar to go on. Dixon. And did that like the uh, England fullback he is. And how about the pass for Merson? Limpar! That's most certainly his. McAllister's gone down. And Arsenal cannot believe it. It's a penalty. Gordon Strachan against David Seaman. 2-2. Two, two. Adams. Norwich have a lot of players back. But they haven't picked up Paul Davis, his first goal of the season. And he just really nudged it past Brian Gunn. It was a difficult bounce, and uh, the ball dropped to earth with Smith. Winterburn for Limpa, for Davis. Two goals for Paul Davis in three minutes. And Nigel Winterburn's pass held the key, really. Cut back by Limpa and rounded off by Davis in style. The win over Norwich kept Arsenal second. Their unbeaten record, meanwhile, continued to keep their big pre-season signing from the Canaries out of the team. From my own personal point of view, I'm the man that time forgot, I think. Uh, you know, with coming here with such a big transfer fee, <clears throat> I think the Arsenal supporters were probably home to see a little bit more of me, but due to circumstances and the success of the team, uh, they haven't seen that much. The man keeping Linnigan out was Steve Bold. Not that he had much to do in the return leg of the Rumbelows Cup. Well, it's a great experience for the third division side playing here at Highbury, and whatever happens, I'm sure their players will benefit from it. But they're in trouble here. Dixon's cross, and the first goal of the evening. And you do feel there might be more to come. It's Perry Groves. Pew. Losing out to Davis. And David Rowcastle can assess the situation in the centre. Pew has got back. But it's another one for Groves again. There's a real air of enjoyment around Highbury. Merson, Smith, they've got more to cheer. Helped on by Smith, Adams is in there, he might pick one up himself, he has done. And that's always a, a moment that the crowd really rise to. Tony Adams, such a popular figure here, such a respected figure too. And his reward tonight, Arsenal's fourth. Eight minutes left. And it's all opening up for Merson. Well, how about that? Billy Stewart left stranded by some magic from Paul Merson, who saw the goalkeeper off his line and lifted it arrogantly over him. Back in the league, Arsenal faced their first real heavyweight contest of the season, Manchester United away at Old Trafford. Arsenal have stolen a goal here and 
the player that they're calling their new match winner. Well, he hasn't won the game here, but he's caught out Seeley. And after spending more than 40 minutes on defending against the purposeful Manchester United, Arsenal have taken the lead. Anders Limpart whipped it in, and Keith Hackett said it was over the line. Unfortunately, it wasn't the finer points of Limpar's goal that would occupy next day's back pages, but the coarser aspects of the competitive spirit. In other words, the second half brawl. In all, 21 players were involved, most, it should be said, trying to calm things down. On top of bookings, Winterburn and Limpar were both to be fined two weeks' wages by the club. So were Roe Castle, Davis and George Graham. While the press reacted with their usual sense of restrained fair play, the players stayed sane with a spot of professional amnesia. We well, against Man United. We won 1-0, didn't we? That was it. Um, yeah, it was very trying time for the players. You know, we got put under the microscope, so to speak, and... Uh, it was a time when we all pulled together, but the team spirit, as everybody said, is brilliant at the club. Um, you know, we've the next day we'd forgotten all about, not forgotten about it, but we just got on with playing football and um, and let the FA and everybody else work out what they were going to do with us. Arsenal continuing to force the pace, still looking for a way past this resolute Sunderland side. Limpa brought down by Kay. Dixon does the job only 17 minutes to go but Arsenal have nosed in front well they're letting Dixon go Lee Dixon the former Manchester City supporter brought up in these parts Merson and it must be Perry Groves Brought into the side by George Graham. It's in! It's Adams! It's certainly going Arsenal's way. Redmond. Something of a hit and hope, but Quinn's got to it. And Clive Allen gets one back for Manchester City. Davis. Now, what can Limpar do against Emerson? They tried to uh, shove him aside. And Limpar still going. And Anders Limpar with a strike here that has stunned Coventry. George Graham, who switched the side tactically in the second half to try and look for the win, and he might have got it thanks to his superb Swedish international. Emerson, now Winterburn. Arsenal breaking out again. Limpar breaking out again. Deflected. 2-0. But Limpar has given Arsenal such a late lift here. And that will be his second goal. Coventry nil, Arsenal two. Davis over Humphrey, collected by Campbell, and then by Limpa. Arsenal away from home, coming strong in the second half again. Anders couldn't quite repeat the trick as Arsenal drew away at Crystal Palace. But dropping two points is one thing, having them taken away is another. That's what happened the following Monday, though as the FA Tribunal on the Old Trafford fight decided to hit Arsenal where it hurt, in the title race. At London Colney, it was time for a team talk. Uh, number two, it's the first opportunity I've had to talk to everybody after the, the Tribunal uh, decision. And the media are enjoying it, the majority of the media, media are enjoying it, they're enjoying us getting all this stick, because normally nothing comes out of Highbury. 
right? And they're enjoying it. Again, lads, there's one way to, there's one way to handle it. Just keep winning matches. They're looking at us and the stick we've been getting the last couple of weeks, right? It seems fashionable just now to jump in the bandwagon and get into Arsenal. It's fashionable. We're not second bottom, second bottom. We're second top. And that's it, they're second. We're second top of the league. And it's the best start we've had for over 40 years. So keep thinking football all the time. OK? Think of football. You should all be proud of yourself. And make sure we'll work hard individually and collectively. Right? We're all professional people. You've all got responsibilities to yourself and your families. And keep that in your mind at all times, right? Now, lads, if we stay together as a unit within the club, and even now, I'm trying to sort of get the crowd right with us. Now, we've got to get the fans on our side a lot more, like they do up north, especially at home, right? We've got to get them, you know, included in it, because I'm getting loads and hundreds of letters telling us, right, about how unfair it is that the media are jumping on top of the bandwagon, why are we getting bad press? We've got to get the fans on our side. You know, you go up north, it's almost like a gold star. You go to places up there, and we've got to do the same with our fans. And I'll, 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 I'll whip them up, don't worry about that. But lads, we've got to watch our behaviour, I'm telling you right now. But that means we've still got to tackle, we've still got to close down, we've still got to challenge. Hopefully it was one of many setbacks we've yeah, had this year. Um, quite a big setback, two points being deducted. We were all a bit despondent when it happened. Um, and we were eight points behind it at, at one time. Um, but yeah, we've all stuck together through these through these knockbacks and uh, had the strength of character to come through them at the end. The United uh, episode, you know, it's not one we're all proud of, but uh, these things happen in a competitive atmosphere, and I think we're very severely punished uh, for it. And so were Southampton, the team unlucky enough to be Arsenal's next opponents. Get the two points back. Bold. Alan Smith has won it well. Rose fastening on to the chance for Arsenal. Paul Merson collects the goal, and Arsenal, their character really on show today after the FA inquiry which went against them in the week. And they're off to a good start at the expense of Southampton. Alan Smith's header, and Groves cut inside and then stabbed it across goal, and Paul Merson did the rest. There's so much zest about Arsenal. Southampton are struggling to cope. Davis, Limpa, yes! A cheeky goal, and Anders Limpa makes up for the miss. And Davis spotted the run. But the control was top class, and then just enough pace on the shot for the ball to reach the back of the net. Winterburn, Limpa. Arsenal putting their passes together so crisply. Davis, Groves, first time cross. Alan Smith at last opens his league account for the season. And that's the sort of cross supplied by Groves that he would dream about. Smith, who's so unselfish in his work for the team, so appreciated by his colleagues, but there is nothing like scoring. And Alan Smith helps himself here. Limpa, beautifully found by Thomas. Winterburn. Merson, the chance is still there, the goal is there. It's another for Smith. And Arsenal really showing that they are back in business. Demoralisation around Highbury earlier this week. But now that the football has started again, their minds very much on the job, and Southampton might feel that they've come here on the wrong day. With one important game out of the way, Arsenal headed across town to QPR for what Paul Davis rates as another. I thought that was one of our best performances. Um, we were actually losing the game 1 0, um, and we felt that we'd played a lot of good football. 
and the breaks weren't happening for us and it looked as though we weren't going to win the game. A minute to go to half-time. And here's Roy Wegerly. Adams across. Oh, and Ray Lewis has given the penalty. Adams with mild protests. But I think deep down he might feel that this was a little harsh. Wegerly seemed happy to go down. Wegerly takes, Wegerly scores. It'll come for Thomas. Oh, great save by Roberts. Davis with the free kick. And Adams blocked. And again, Merson, goal! 12 minutes left. And this rather makeshift Queen's Park Rangers side unable to hang on to the lead they got just before half-time. Arsenal just would not give up. And finally, Merson rammed it in. Smith, wasn't quite sure where it had dropped, but Merson located it. Winterburn. For Campbell. And for Smith. What a turnaround. The sort of recovery that a side which believes they are capable of still winning the championship would make. Roberts might be disappointed here, but Alan Smith absolutely delighted. Bardsley. Oh, and it's all going Arsenal's way. This is Campbell. Three goals inside ten minutes in the closing stages here and Kevin Campbell rolls it in a Liverpool draw at Manchester City meant the two deducted points were now history unfortunately Manchester United returned to haunt Arsenal in the Rumbelows Cup so the first free kick of the match and Ince tees it up for Blackmore Hughes inside him, Hughes is unmarked, it's 2-0. Manchester United not resting on their laurels before half-time, and Sharp, incredibly, it's three. Bold, beaten away by Sealy from... Thomas has shot, but Alan Smith seized on the rebound. Davis with the signal. Adams forcing away through. Oh, the goalkeeper's dropped it. It's a second for Smith, and Arsenal are back in business. Manchester United go two in front again with Lee Sharp. And Sharp's hat-trick is there for the taking, and he's got it. Now Hughes, Arsenal stunned, and it's 6-2, Danny Wallace. Those six goals were as many as Arsenal had conceded after 14 games in the league where they remained unbeaten. The next match was a six-pointer against the only other unbeaten team and the only one above them. It's into the near post from Davis. Masson! As he forced it over the line, the goal is given for Arsenal. A real skirmish. As Grubbelard got to it, pushed it out. It was cleared by Venison, but it's a goal. And the spin suits Limpa. Down he goes. Gillespie caught Anders Limpa. Great responsibility for Dixon, and he's shouldered it. Arsenal, two goals to the good. Well, Arsenal certainly stating their credentials 
for a championship here, and it's rounded off in style by Alan Smith. And Liverpool had no answer. And a goal is scored by Alan Smith as Arsenal go into the lead right on the stroke of half-time. Through to Ian Dowie, brought down by Tony Adams and a penalty given. And a red card, the Arsenal captain sent off. That's a sensational de development now at Kenilworth Road. And now Arsenal back on their haunches because they could be pulled back to 1-1 as Dreyer lines up to take this penalty for Luton Town. Scores and it's 1-1. set him up and Paul Merson here tuck it away with great economy it's a deeper corner this time Adams and Wimbledon who are traditionally so strong in the air couldn't live here with the Arsenal captain he made that his scales Given time to Taylor across for Krasinski. Arsenal look for offside, but it's 2-1. The crowd calling for the referee to blow the final whistle. It's in! And Wimbledon run to Fashionu. But Arsenal had bigger problems than two drop points at home. Six days before Christmas, skipper Tony Adams was given a four-month jail sentence for drunk driving. And the press were gift-wrapped another stick with which to beat the team. That's more than anyone else could manage, as the best defence in the country remained exactly that. All credit's got to go to the people who came in and, and took his place. Uh, Andy Linigan came in and, and did really well. Um, David O'Leary and Boldy. And um, everybody stuck together and, you know, we weren't doing it just for Tony, we were doing it for ourselves as well. But he was always in the back of our minds and when we went out and played. And, uh, you know, he just gave us that little bit of steel when we... Uh, when we got in them cold winters and you know we kept thinking about him in that cold cell and uh, they pulled us through. The game against Villa, the nil-nil is live on the box. There's however, you know, so much pressure on Andy Linning. He came in and done a first-class job, and uh, he, I'm very proud of him. He, he was brilliant. Were you able to watch that? Yeah, I caught cool glimpses of it. Misjudged by Nielsen. Nelson nipped in quickly behind him, Smith's gone into the centre. And here comes Groves, down he goes, Arsenal look to the referee for a penalty, but it's not to be given. Andy Comment was the defender involved, the number five. Well, it was a close one. Ormond Droy. Here comes Platt, David Platt for Villa, brilliant stop by Seaman. All credit to Platt as well. Some players might have been tempted to go down there and try to influence the referee into giving a penalty. But Platt had one thing on his mind, he was trying to score. But Seaman stopped it spectacularly. Paul Williams. Oh, and you can't give the ball away to Arsenal. In this area of the pitch, the form that they've been in this season, Limpa. And Alan Smith! does punish the mistake thanks to a very precise cross from Limpar that took Mark right out Davis and it comes to Merson who retrieves it and the ball was over the line Arsenal have got a second and it will go down to Paul Merson on the stretch really was just trying to get the ball across the face of the goal and he got it over the line
Right, let's it go. Oh, to the embarrassment of his goalkeeper. And it must be a goal for Alan Smith. And David Seaman will claim an assist for this one. But Martin Taylor filling in for Peter Shilton. Embarrassed here. He must have called for it because Wright let it go. And uh, well, Alan Smith was right on the spot and followed in successfully. Jones spurning the long throw this time. He gets the cross in. And Bryson! The score for Sheffield United. Smith. Oh, did Jones pull at Groves then? I think he did. It's a penalty. Sheffield United have put up a very good showing here. And Arsenal with a bit between their teeth now. And this is Winterburn. Smith! Paul Davis really opened Sheffield United up. The low cross from Winterburn. Smith going in with Beasley into the net. Merson. Thomas, he's got in, I think, to the scorer's surprise. It's a little side footer towards the far post, and it just crept in. Sheffield United looking well beaten now, but they've contributed a great deal to this match. Oh, and Smith is in, no flag. 4-1, a second for Alan Smith, Davis involved once more. Over Thomas. Smith! 14 minutes into the second half. Arsenal's best league start for 40 years continued into the new year and Liverpool's cushion was down to a single uncomfortable point. The first week in January brought the third round of the FA Cup. Mercer almost impudently steering it out to Smith. Davis, Arsenal on the counter-attack now with Groves. Merson's in the centre, Limpar is there as well, it's behind both of them and Smith! who was late on the scene, gets the goal. Limpa, no offside, 2-0. And now, oh, oh, Leary! What has he done? He's brought Sunderland back into the game with an own goal. Limpa, away from Mavert, Davis has got into the centre, and Limpa <laughs> had no right to try for goal then, one can only assume that's what he was doing because it forced Torsved into making the save. He can hit them so well with either foot, and that was a shot, make no mistake about it. Allen has got Walsh to his right. Lineker is the only other player up for Spurs. And Walsh gets past Davis. And plays Paul Allen in for Spurs. And Seaman was allowed to make the save. He served Arsenal nobly. As Walsh picked a route here. And Allen was unmarked. They were drawn towards the ball by the defenders. But bang in the centre. It was a great chance. Well, David Seaman must be full of admiration for the way Neville Southall played in the first half. He might be threatened here as Groves accelerates. Oh, and it's Masson! Southall is beaten. So Arsenal come out 
for the second half with a real appetite to take the game by the scruff of its neck and it's been rewarded straight away. They've taken the lead here. The ball poked in by Paul Merson. That goal at Goodison took Arsenal past Liverpool into first place for the first time in the season and with the FA Cup coming up, there'd be no dislodging them for at least a fortnight. First, though, there was a small identity crisis to be sorted out from the Spurs game. Nigel Winterburn, who has been known to impersonate Dave Seaman on occasion, having been mistaken for a foreigner. Oh, that was quite funny, actually. Um, Anders just, you know, me and Anders were close together, and he just happened to trip someone as they were running by. Uh, and the next thing I know, that the referee's booking me. Uh, and I'm trying to tell the ref that... Um, it, it, you know, it wasn't me, I, I can assure you, but he wasn't having any of it and so I went in the book. Um, because I was close to, to being suspended anyway, um, I appealed against it and uh, got off. Then came the season's longest running TV serial, Arsenal and Leeds in the fourth round of the FA Cup. Sterling has time to measure the cross. But here's Limpart, and Leeds are doing the chasing back now. Limpart for Arsenal, 1-1, one, one, and a wonderful equaliser. What a reply. After 23 games, the unbeaten record had to go eventually, and the best that can be said was that at least it didn't happen at White Hart Lane. Winterburn. Stewart! Arsenal are behind. Stewart. That's a marvellous ball to Damien Matthew. Kerry Dixon is in the middle. Matthew to Dixon, to the back of the net. Campbell. And now Smith has got through and got one back. Two minutes into stoppage time. Back in the cup, Leeds and Arsenal were giving sudden death a bad name. This is game number four at Allen Road, after draw number three at Highbury. Here's Wicklow, who scored once this season from uh, long range against Chelsea here. Marcel able to play on the break through Merson. Sterling, the defender closest to him. Campbell in the middle. They've let Merson run a very long way! It's another solo goal at Allen Road for Arsenal. Marcel have a free kick. A chance to uh, double their lead right on half time. Chapman, Hills, Dixon. Little one two with Linnigan. And Lee Dixon has got the second goal. And that is very, very sweet satisfaction. Strachan leads, leaning heavily on his capacity for inspiration. Lee Chapman, surely he's done it, he has. Before a slightly smaller crowd at Highbury on the same day, another long-running saga was ending. Tony Adams came straight out of jail and into the reserves against Reading. His first game for two months and a rehearsal for his return to the first team 11 days later at Shrewsbury. Up by Merson, in comes Linnigan on the far side. Well, David O'Leary gets himself and the ball out of the net, and Arsenal are in front. Michael Thomas. Oh, and Jan Smith hits Merson behind him. Is it two for Arsenal? It is. Before the half-time break, and 
really Eric Young must hold up his hand. He was beaten by the bounce. And uh, Merson kept his composure. O'Leary made it his. Campbell. A Smith. There's a shot on! There's a great goal on for Alan Smith. Arsenal reimposed their quality again. Winterburn. Oh, and it's going to be four. It's Kevin Campbell. And Nigel Martin. Culpable there. And Palace, who conceded four goals on this ground in the league last season. I think Kevin coming in the second half of the season, I mean, that was like a new signing. He's been superb and, and also contributed some very important goals. But... Uh, me and Kevin have been able to work up quite a good relationship over, over the latter part of the season. Kevin Campbell, I always thought, thank God he's at this club, that I don't have to come against a, a young Rambo like him. With ten vital goals during the run-in, Kevin Campbell filled the Rambo role perfectly. He found total recall a bit more difficult, though. Talk us through the first one. I can't remember it as it goes, but uh, now my first one, who was that against? I can't remember. Working back and making the interception on the far side. Winterburn. Much easier to pass the ball than to run with it. And Thomas has made the ball do the work with a delightful finish. Hard work for Arsenal, but they're in front now. Hit through the centre by Winterburn, where Thomas had already made the run. He collected it, controlled it, and chipped it into the back of the net. Despite the defeat at Chelsea, Arsenal were still top when they travelled to Anfield to face Liverpool, who'd lost a manager in two games in quick succession. Well, it is impossible to watch this game without thinking all the time back to that amazing night here. Coming up for two years ago now, and Arsenal came out on top. Here's Merson. And they've played him through, Alan Smith's return pass. Merson against Grubbala. Merson pass Grubbala. A goal for Arsenal that could carry huge significance between these two first division heavyweights. It's a big blow struck by Arsenal. Will it send Liverpool to their knees? It was a high quality goal with Merson combining with Smith. The timing of the pass back to Merson, absolutely perfect. No suggestion of offside and a very calm finish indeed. You know, they're the champions and we've beat them twice and they haven't scored against us. So, you know, it's nice to take six points off the champions. The Liverpool game also marked the emergence of David Hillier, a failed basketball player, bottom of the class beneath Nigel Winterburn at Big Dave's goalkeeping academy, and the latest in a long line of stars to emerge from the Gunners' youth scheme. It's so cool for a youngster. He uh, came in and probably surprised everybody with his outstanding performance uh, of marking Molby up at Liverpool when we beat Liverpool 1-0. Uh, again, this is uh, full credit, not to, not, from me, not to me, but from me to the youth set-up of the club. David, what were your ambitions, what were your goals at the start of the season? Because you obviously weren't in the first team. Well, no, I was, um, only had a con contract till the end of the season. And obviously, it was my first priority was to get that contract renewed. And um, I'd set myself the target of getting a couple of first team games. You know, I was 20, coming up to 21 years of age, so you know, I've got to be looking now towards that. You think you'll get your contract renewed? <laughs> I think I've already had it done somehow. <laughs> waiting while Bowles came forward but it was a short throw in the end but Campbell meets the cross and steers the header just beyond the fingertips of John Bourne 
Cheatham. That's Dublin. Deflected beyond Seaman's dive. Dublin will claim it. This is Adams. Bold. And now Smith. Great save, but Adams has forced it over the line. Arsenal regain their grip on the game. These teams know so much about each other. Sixth meeting of the season. Great respect for each other as well, as that FA Cup saga showed. David Seaman wanting to uh, bypass the midfield with his clearance. Dixon. Smith going to the right. And here's Campbell! Well, Leeds, as I was saying, know a lot about Arsenal, but perhaps a little less about Campbell. Well, they know about him now. It's been a long wait for the Highbury faithful. And Campbell goes on, Leeds hesitates, and he's bundled in a second. It's Kevin Campbell's day. Smith again, a major influence, and Campbell refused to give it up and got his reward. Smith first two. And here's Campbell, he's got the strength. Four goals in three games now this muscular youngster and he's steering Arsenal closer to the championship it's a goal Jensen turned and shot instantly and caught Arsenal out Bar making a run out for a short corner and Paul Davis a little caught out by that. He's got other plans. He's made his signal and it's deep. Adams wins it. Smith miss kicks. O'Leary. It was a chance. Davis. Now a Rowcastle. Campbell. Well, Smith shoots. Not too many opportunities in this rather tense game. While Arsenal drew, Liverpool went back to the top of the table via a 7-1 thrashing of Derby, who must have been cursing the league's fixtures computer, because the following week they entertained the Gunners. Bold Smith, straight from the training ground. Davis with the corner. Bowls there again. Oh, and Smith! An identical goal to Smith's first. Merson. Here's Winterburn. Now, McGrath was keen to keep the ball in play, but he's only presented it to Limpart. Off goes Campbell, and Limpart has played him through. It's not been easy for Arsenal in this first half, but suddenly a moment of real incision. And Campbell dictated to Limpart where to put it, and then he put it in the net. Winterburn, too strong in the tackle for Price. Davis! That's a remarkable goal. And Villa's heads drop here in 
astonishment, Paul Davis. Merson gets the ball in early. Smith has looked it over the goalkeeper and over the line. The sort of service that Smith will appreciate. A deep early cross. And that's 3-0. Everything being done at a very fast pace by Arsenal at the moment. Too quick for Villa. Limpa! It's another for Smith. Well, when Arsenal won the championship two years ago, Smith's regular supply of goals was very much to the forefront, and he's matching that again this season. And will it mean the title again? Nigel Spink leaves the match on a stretcher. David Platt puts on the jersey. Aston Villa will want to get this match over with now. They've got to try and protect David Platt as well. Here's Campbell. And there's nothing that Aston Villa could do about that. It's five for Arsenal, a second for Campbell. And the standing goalkeeper finding out quickly how difficult this job is in the first division, particularly when you've got an inform opponent like Kevin Campbell. Arsenal 5, Aston Villa 0. It's easy for Adams. <laughs> Two up for Arsenal, Smith and Campbell. Now, can Campbell use his strength? He does do! He tucks it away. And his run continues. Bryson might fall for him. <laughs> now, who's going to come out of this mess in possession? Well, it's Dixon who clears. Campbell who shrugs Beasley aside. Smith is there with him. Smith takes it early and steers it home with real style. And Arsenal have broken out to take a two-goal lead. Winterburn. Merson. Might try and line up a shot for himself here. Oh, a double deflection. And I think it finally flew in off Mickey Adams. As Liverpool, without dog leash, struggled to find form, Arsenal not only regained the top spot, they built up what looked like a comfortable eight-point lead. And with the FA Cup semi-final looming, there was inevitable talk of the double. Are there any particular games that stand out for you? Any performances? Uh, I know one for different reasons, the Spurs game. Uh, I think it was the only time really all season we didn't perform to anything like we should have done. Gascoigne strikes! Oh! Fabulous! Are they going to be two up? They are! And the whole psychology of this semi-final could change. If Arsenal could grab a goal here. Dixon crosses. Smith heads it. They have done it. Mavert to Lineker. Allen to the left. Samway is going ahead of Lineker, who's opened it up for himself. Oh, and it's brushed through the goalkeeper. In the time on a tradition, Arsenal were now free to concentrate on the league, and they needed to. Liverpool, with Graham Souness in charge, had used the Gunners away day at Wembley to cut their lead to five points. Glided on by Smith. And look at Campbell. He made the defenders seem like statues. 
his reactions were first class. Perhaps Manchester City is less so, and they're a goal down. That's beating Brennan, and Groves can reach it, can cross it. Smith. Arsenal have a second, and Paul Merson picked his spot. Great work by Groves on the right. Great appreciation by Smith in the centre. He knew where Merson was, but it still needed some scoring, and Merson was up to the task. Forward by Brennan, and it's a penalty. Niall Quinn went down. Foul by Bold. Mark Ward. 2-1. Uh, away again and David White who is one of the fastest forwards around and finishes very well too and Arsenal in danger of dropping a couple of points here or maybe worse there's a real air of concern around Highbury tonight with Liverpool in action of course as well at home to Crystal Palace there's no margin for error for Arsenal. Davis, it's a penalty! All eyes on Lee Dixon. Arsenal lead! Well, David Seaman would enjoy being a winner against his old club. Second goal could seal that. And Campbell, is he going to collect it? No, but Merson is. Well, the raw aggression of Kevin Campbell, again, a major factor. Stejkal blocked the first shot. Merson was first to the rebound. Liverpool had won two straight, and the home draw against Manchester City meant Arsenal were just three points ahead going into the crucial bank holiday weekend, where there were six up for grabs. The first of two games was at Sunderland, who needed the points themselves to avoid relegation. Well, a point will be useful to Sunderland, but they'd love to turn it into three. And that would possibly give a twist in the uh, title story. Brady. Yeah, across to him quickly, but Brady skipped past him. Dixon in the way. Gary Ours with Gabby Adini's help. It's a great effort! What a save! In that moment, it summed up the excellence of David Seaman's season. When it left the boot of ours, well, so many of us here thought it was going in, but Seaman had other ideas. Liverpool, meanwhile, had lost at Chelsea to leave Arsenal just one point away from the title. And come kick-off time against Manchester United at Highbury on bank holiday Monday, they'd handed over three, losing again to Notts Forest. Arsenal took the field as champions for the second time in three years, and what would have been a hard-fought battle for vital points turned into a title party. We watched it down at the golf club where we have our pretty much meal and then we listened to it on the radio on the way to the ground and then we were able to watch just the last bit at the ground and uh, obviously there was a big crowd in at Highbury already and they were all listening to it so it made for a great party atmosphere at the final whistle. Yeah, we were all in the um, tea room and uh, watching the game, all the coaching staff and the players together. And um, we were just praying that uh, obviously Forest could hold out, and gladly they did, and um, we won the title. I mean, it's been a dream come true for me. I didn't know really know how to feel. I, I sort of looked at the other lads and you know tried to sort of you know they've done it before. What 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 do you do? How do you act?
all the hard work that went in. It was nice to be able to watch the, uh, the Liverpool game beforehand and then relax and play in a relaxed atmosphere against Manchester United. Was that an anti-climax or was it better to be able to go out and relax and celebrate? Better to be relaxed, I think. Um, there might have been a bit more pressure on if Liverpool would have won and I don't think the lads would have been able to enjoy the occasion so much. It was an anti-climax, really, basically. We had a celebration before, really, you know, <laughs> and to go out there and play, you know, it's hard you know, to really get yourself G'd up. How about we did? Is it nice to win it with a game to spare for once rather than coming down to the the heart attack final moments of the season? <laughs> it was quite fascinating actually because uh, uh, before we actually uh, played Manchester United, um, obviously Liverpool lost at Forest and people were saying to me, would you have, prepared, would you have been uh, preferred Liverpool uh, to have won so that we would then have won it with a lot more satisfaction? And I, I said, you must be joking. <laughs> I actually sat there and enjoyed watching the Manchester United game, knowing we were champions. There was plenty to enjoy as Arsenal relaxed and turned on the style. Amid the team celebrations, there was special satisfaction for Alan Smith, who'd edged nearer the Golden Boot Award with his hat-trick finished off from the penalty spot. That was my first uh, penalty in professional football because I've never liked taking them before. Um, but Lee was kind enough to let me have it and uh, I was on my hat-trick, there was no pressure. Uh, I wouldn't like to take it when there's pressure on it now. For Dave Seaman though, the chance to top a dream season by equaling Ray Clements' record of conceding just 16 league goals had fallen along with the United's Mark Robbins in the penalty box. I was aware of it like the last couple of games and you know like they got the penalty which uh, blew that out the window and that was it. But. Uh, you know, that's just a little extra, you know, as far as I'm concerned. We've got the main one. That was in your mind the seconds after you pulled him down, was it? <laughs> Somebody, one of the press lads said to me after the game, he says, what would you have done if they sent you off? And I said, well, I'd most likely took him with me. <laughs> Winning the league while you watch TV may not have the glamour of a last gasp goal at Anfield, but for veterans of the 89 team, this win brought the satisfaction of knowing that no one could now write Arsenal off as a one-title team. It's nice that way, I mean, it's a professional club on and off the field and uh, as I say, even though we'd won the, the league title before we stepped out against Manchester United, we went down there and did a professional job and that's what wins your league titles and wins you many other things. Other things for Arsenal next season, of course, will include the European Cup. First, though, there was the small matter of the final game of this season to be dealt with. The new Arsenal Superstore was doing a roaring trade in championship souvenirs and advanced video orders. The fans were already on fast forward to autumn 91. Would you be going to Europe to see them please? Yeah. yeah, well I'll try if I've got the money, yes. Why not? If I have to crawl, I'll go. Say we are top of the league, say we are top of the league. Say we are scandal St. Greasy. <laughs> we hate them. <laughs> That's a bad program. Because they're fascists. You guys going to go to Europe like this next season? Yeah, yeah. yeah. right, yeah. Inter, inter, here we come. Inter. <laughs> if they're there. Well, well whatever, you know. Got busy interview. We're there anyway. <laughs> We're there, they might not be. <laughs> Frankly, the crowd couldn't have cared less if Inter had been that day's visitors. This was the chance for everyone, from paying customers to players, to relax and savour the success of a long, hard season. Thank you very much. Thank you. George. Thank you. Hello. The day's game wasn't entirely without a meaning of its own, though. As well as a general feeling of wanting to go out on a high note, the players had the added incentive of preserving their record of just one league defeat. For players like David Rowcastle, though, pride in the season's achievements was tinged with frustration at having been a spectator for long stretches of it. I've seen both sides of it, really, because uh, when we won the title two years ago, I was ever-present, I played every game, so I've seen the other side where I've just played a few games. And uh, if I had another question asked, can you get a championship medal, do you qualify? It, I mean, it was driving me mad because people forgot about the first two months of the season, which I had obviously played the games. Incentive for next season, though, is Europe. Yeah, I'm not going to say anything about next season, because after last season, I said well, I'm looking forward to this season, and uh, it's gone how it has, so uh, I'm just going to say I'll report back on July the 8th.
On the field, Lee Dixon and Dave Seaman limbered up for the lap of honour with a few public relations exercises, while in the tunnel, the team mascots were briefed on the basics of the game. I want you to smile. I haven't seen anyone smile yet. Come on, really big smile. That's it. Nice big smiles, nice big waves. When you go out, keep your chin up, because if you look down at your feet, you get a great big picture of the top of your head. Don't put it too far back, just keep your chin level. Smile. Before kickoff, there was another trophy to be collected, this one by the boss. And once the ceremonies were complete, it was showtime. Emerson trying to ease the ball wide to Smith unsuccessfully. And Merson has caught Coventry with a square line. Oh, an own goal by Peak. One of Arsenal's most spectacular goals of the season, and it's come from the Coventry captain. for the circumstances with the championship already in the bag and is it six? Perry Groves is another guest at the party So Arsenal's last win of the season was their biggest. There'd been 23 others, 13 draws and one away defeat. The fewest allowed by any club for over a century. 
Well done, lads. Great, great, great way to finish. 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 After a few minutes, it was back out for the encores and some hands-on experience of the championship trophy, the only absentee from the previous week's celebrations. While the great reception for the team continued outside, in the tunnel the Highbury staff were laying plans for one of their own. Just throw a few eggs at Steve Ball, don't we? Why? Why? <laughs> because he threw our box office manager in the um, bath, so we're going to get him back. Move! Yeah. It's a great move, otherwise you're going to... Uh... I'm going to know the way. Yes, I'm going to know the way. For the second time in a week, a few bottles of Chateau Gillespie Road were cracked open and the start of a long evening began. Once the celebrations and a working holiday in Singapore are completed, the players will be able to enjoy what's left of the summer. Then, having set the standard for the rest of the First Division this season, we will be back to London Colney to try to do it all again.
What a season. We have built the best team in the country and now we are going to build the best stadium. You will have heard by now about our plans to redevelop the North Bank. Here is what a few of our stars, past and present, think about it. England's vigorous assault is not yet held and their centre forward Drake scores with a beautiful hook. Three up in less than a quarter of an hour. I think it's a great idea. And very soon the Gunners are pressing hard. It was right half Forbes who was largely responsible for their first goal, which was put through by Holton. This is a terrific idea, a real winner. George, he's done it! Don't miss out, sign up now. Oh, Brady won it beautifully. My bond started with Arsenal when I was 15. The club once again are showing their qualities of leadership. I'm going to buy a bond. Come and join me. Oh, what a goal! Don't miss out on Arsenal's future. Sign today. So there you have it. Now is your chance. Sign for the Arsenal. Phone 0345 900 900 for a prospectus now.